two sisters, wild dogs, born into a family of legendary hunters. But they're not the only heavy hitters on the block. A clan of hyenas has moved in on the wild dog's turf. A land teeming with prey. Two supreme predators. A clash is inevitable. The only question is, when the smoke clears, who will be left standing? Inside a thicket of thorn bushes is a family of wild dog pups. There are six altogether, a typical litter size. Four brothers and their two sisters, Tandy and Lula. Lula is nervous and likes to stay close to the others, while Tandy is more adventurous and often explores on her own. But none of the pups have yet ventured further than a few dozen yards from the den where they were born 10 weeks ago. These new faces have swelled the numbers of this dog pack from 10 to 16. Their parents are the Alpha Pair, a devoted duo whose scientists have tracked using radio collars for several years. The other eight adults are all aunts and uncles. It's a close-knit family, the Mopane Pack, named for the cops of trees where they always raise their young. These Mopane trees are a mile from the Luangwa River, at the southeastern edge of the pack's large range. 200 square miles of untamed land. This riverside territory is ideal hunting ground, the perfect place to raise pups. As the dry season tightens its grip on the Luangwa Valley, water holes vanish and prey is forced to the river to drink, right through the Mopane Pax land. Wild dogs are some of Africa's most successful hunters, elite teams of endurance runners, and the Mopane Pack is no exception. They can run at nearly 40 miles an hour, over long distances, exhausting their prey. A highly coordinated unit, their tactic is to take turns leading the pursuit, like a relay race. When one dog tires, another is ready to take over. Working together like this means the little dogs, who only weigh about 50 pounds, can take down prey several times their own size. This time, two of the pack have caught an impala. They kill and consume it in a matter of minutes. It's a good meal, but these dogs won't eat it all. Tandy, Lula and their brothers 
are not yet old enough to join the hunt. But they were weaned off their mother's milk over five weeks ago and are on a meat diet now. They're hungry, but must wait patiently at the den for the hunters to return, under the watchful eye of a babysitter. But in every litter, there's always one who just doesn't want to be corralled. Tandy is the inquisitive pup who loves to explore. Each day, her curiosity leads her further afield. Lula prefers to rough and tumble with her brothers. Playing helps prepare the pups for the future. It strengthens their muscles and sharpens their reflexes, which will make them better hunters and better pack members. At last, dinner is served. The whole pack, males and females, share their feast with the young ones. They eat scraps, regurgitated by the adults, or, like today, chunks of meat hauled back from a nearby kill. This food sharing is one of the secrets of the wild dog's success. It helps keep the whole family well-fed and bonded. Wild dogs are the most social dogs in the world and almost never fight over food. Every kill is shared with every dog. Tandy and Lula don't have to worry about being excluded from meals. But life's not completely without anxiety. The pup's mother has picked up a noise in the undergrowth. Wild dogs have the best hearing in the canine world. Her huge ears swivel like satellite dishes to pinpoint the sound. There's something out there. A rustle. Is it the wind? No, she can smell it too. This is something else. Something to fear. A spotted hyena. One of the wild dog's worst enemies. Well over twice their size and with some of the strongest jaws of any mammal. Hyenas compete with dogs for food, and they'll eat anything. A young wild dog pup is certainly on the menu. This time, the whole Mopane pack has caught wind of the danger, and a single hyena won't go up against a group of wild dogs alone. But where there's one, there are usually many. Spotted hyenas live in clans with as many as 80 individuals. And just a mile to the south of the dog's home base, a clan has moved in. This is the Uko clan. A 30-strong gang of muscular, cunning predators. They haven't used this den for months, but as water holes dry up and prey congregates near the river, it's now prime real estate. Based here, they, like the dogs, 
can take advantage of dry season riches. But life in the hyena clan is very different from that in the dog pack. Here, there is none of the unity of the dogs. It's every hyena for itself. The Uko clan is made up of several distinct families, organized into a strict hierarchy. But even the lowest status females outrank all males. And the supreme leader is a big matriarch. She rules with an iron paw. Life's good for those at the top. First dibs on any kills and the comfiest dens. Those at the bottom of the heap survive on scraps and sleep outside. This young male is Ndogo. At nine months, he's the oldest cub in the clan. He still suckles occasionally, but his mum has two new mouths to feed. So he rarely gets a turn. Like all hyenas, she has just two teeth. Her four-week-old twins get priority. Her milk has the highest protein and fat content of any land carnivore and helps her cubs grow at a phenomenal rate. A month from now, they'll be almost double in size. Ndogo's mother is low-ranking, so his life's never been easy. Even so, it's soon to get a whole lot worse. Up till now, his mother has made sure her firstborn son gets meat from her kills and protects him as best she can in clan squabbles but he's really big enough to brave the complex world of hyena politics alone. Soon, his mother will stop indulging him, and he'll be treated like the other males in the clan, the dregs of hyena society. Ndogo is going to have to sort out his own status. When he reaches sexual maturity in a year or so, he'll be forced to leave this clan for good. Wild dog pups Tandy and Lula also face a milestone. In a couple of weeks' time, they'll need to leave the den, the only home they've known, and follow their pack out into the wider world. Dogs roam over very large distances, only settling for three months of the year while they rear pups. Tandy, Lula and their brothers will need to be strong enough and savvy enough to keep up with the adults. Growing fast, they need more meat than ever. They're always hungry. But as usual, they're in the care of a couple of babysitters, waiting for the hunters to return. Suddenly, the dogs become aware of intruders. This time, it's wildebeest. Not predators, but prey. It would take a lot more than two dogs to bring down a 500-pound quarry like this. 
but the gods can't resist sizing up a potential meal. From the safety of the bushes, the pups watch intently. This is a good opportunity to observe the adults at work. The wildebeest are nervous. They've had run-ins with wild dogs before, and it rarely ends well for them. It's a tense standoff. Meanwhile, Tandy is doing what Tandy does best. She's exploring, off on her own, completely unaware of the volatile situation, only 30 yards away. If the herd were to get spooked and stampede, she could easily be caught in their path and trampled. The wildebeest make a move, but it's in the opposite direction. And the dogs let them go. Still oblivious to the danger she was in, Tandi continues her exploration. She was lucky this time. A warthog is a much more manageable size, though by no means easy prey. Well armed with teeth and tusks, they've been known to injure predators twice their size. But the babysitters can't resist a chase, and they abandon their post. This time, Tandy notices something's up and scampers back to join the safety of the litter. Now the pups are completely on their own, for the first time in their lives. The warthog's little legs can't outstrip the dog's athletic strides. Two hundred yards from the den, they bring him down. But this time, Instead of dragging the carcass to the pups, the babysitters fetch their little charges and escort them to the kill. It's the furthest they've ever been from home. And it's the last big step before being allowed to join the adults on a hunt. Turning up to a kill is one thing. Actually making one is quite another. The pups will need to be committed team players if they're going to graduate as hunters in this pack. And for Wayward Tandy, that might be asking a lot. The pack's strength comes from its unity. Wild dogs are remarkable for their tight, complex social structure. But unlike the hyena clan, it's based not on fear and dominance, but on play and submission. They are the least aggressive of all canines. The alpha pair lead the pack, but don't dominate it. Their strong bonds are constantly reaffirmed by greeting ceremonies, where even the alpha dogs act submissively to the others. It keeps the team together, ready to hunt and feed as a pack. Scent plays an important role in bonding the pack too. The dogs have scent glands on their anuses, genitals and faces, which they use to communicate age, health and status. When one dog urinates, pack members roll in it to acquire the same smell. As a result, the dogs have a very strong body odor, and any that get separated from the pack can find their way back by tracking the family smell. Unlike the hyenas, and indeed most mammals, it's female wild dogs that must leave their home pack to breed. 
When Tandy and Lula reach sexual maturity in about 18 months, they'll strike out on their own to form a new pack with unrelated males and have pups of their own. The bonds they create with their new family will be just as strong as the old ones. While the pups and their babysitters digest their warthog, the alpha male and the rest of the Mopane pack are a mile away at the Luangwa River. They traveled here in the cool of the morning and are reluctant to move again now in the hottest part of the day. Wild dogs are crepuscular, which means they're most active during the twilight hours, preferring to hunt at dawn and dusk, then rest up during the day. But their downtime is about to end. The hyena matriarch has led some of the Ukuo clan down to the river. It's the first time the Mopane pack have seen their new neighbors up close. There are at least as many hyenas here as there are dogs. Spotted hyenas are the largest of the four hyena species, some up to five feet long. Even the largest dog falls two feet short of that. The pack is outweighed and outgunned. If it comes to a fight, the dogs don't stand a chance. The alpha dog makes the smart choice and surrenders the pack's spot on the beach to the matriarch. But when one door closes, another often opens. Forced to keep moving, the roaming Mopane pack stumbles on the remains of a leopard kill. There's enough left to take home to feed the pups. But the carcass is upwind of the hyenas. And the stench of rotting meat also alerts them. Scraps missed by the dogs stop them in their tracks, but not for long. If the dogs can make a quick getaway, they might escape with the kill. But the hyenas can see a better meal. Once again, the dogs have no choice but to capitulate. It's the second time the Mopane pack has had to give ground to its new neighbors. Now, each species shows its nature. Defeated but still united, the dogs head off together. While the hyena that emerged with the spoils refuses to share a single bite. While the matriarch hyena and her cronies wreak havoc with the dogs, back at clan headquarters, there are rumbles in the ranks. Like the wild dogs, Dogo and his family use scent sniffing and licking to communicate status. This status governs everything. Who eats first, who can sit where, and who gets to bully whom. Hyenas inherit status from their mothers, but they can fight to improve it. 
Every hyena is always on the lookout for an opportunity to better itself. With no matriarch home to keep the ranks in line, fractures are forming in the clan. Dog. Gambit is going to work. Mother and son need backup. Power lies in having allies. If several hyenas band together, they could overthrow the matriarch. But the plan backfires. No one likes being bullied by these lowly upstarts. Instead of forming a coalition around Dogo and his mom, the hyenas descend into a chaotic squabble. The rebellion is a failure. And now, the matriarch is back. Her presence quickly restores order. The rebels slink away. Their low tails signal submission. Those loyal to the queen reassert clan links with nuzzles, muzzle licks, and body rubs. The attempted coup failed to bump Ndogo's mother up the pecking order. No one is interested in bonding with him now. Even his mom won't let him suckle. She's pushing him out of the family. Far from improving his place in the clan, the disastrous revolution seems to have triggered his graduation to adolescence. No longer considered a cub, Ndogo has joined the male underclass. And as the youngest male in the clan, he's the lowest of the low. Males usually hang around their family clan till they're about two years old before leaving to join a bachelor gang. But disillusioned and disappointed, nine-month-old Ndogo decides to cut his losses and take his chances elsewhere. It's a rash move. Young and inexperienced in the world outside the clan, he's very vulnerable. Under cover of darkness, the Mopane pack dogs have returned to the beach they were chased away from by the hyenas. They haven't made a kill for nearly 24 hours, unusual for wild dogs. Large herds of antelope gather on the plains next to the river at night. These open spaces provide little cover for ambush predators such as lions but they're ideal for wild dogs who run down their prey. High-pitched twittering calls signal the pack's excitement. The dogs reaffirm their close bonds as they prepare to hunt. But they need to be careful. Hyenas aren't their only dangerous enemy.
lions. The number one killers of wild dogs in the valley. These big cats target the same prey as the little dogs and see the pack as competition. Unlike hyenas, lions don't want to eat the dogs, just to exterminate them. But with hungry pups to feed at home, the dogs are reluctant to give up on the antelope. mean business and soon the pack begins to give way but incredibly the alpha male stands his ground it's this tenacity that has made him top dog still bravery is one thing insanity another Lions can hit 50 miles per hour in a sprint. The dog's top speed is lower, but they can keep it up longer. Stamina wins out over sheer speed tonight. And even in the dark, the tightly knit pack stays together. The big cats have the feel to themselves. But not for long. The commotion has drawn in the Ukuo clan always with an ear out for opportunity. The lions are in good form tonight. Just minutes after chasing off the dogs, they make a kill. Just what the hyenas were hoping for. It's a small kill for so many lions, and the animal is soon ripped apart. Allowing the big cats to feed separately, which suits the hyenas just fine. The whole pride is too big for the hyenas to tackle together, but in small groups, the lions are more vulnerable. Even so, it's testament to the strength and audacity of the clan that they'll take on so many big cats. Lions regularly kill spotted hyenas, accounting for more than 60% of all fatalities. A sneaky approach only yields scraps. They want a decent meal so they launch a full-on assault. <laughs> Hyenas are canny enough to cooperate when they need strength in numbers, but they won't share anything they plunder. Finally, the pride drives off the hyenas. <laughs> In 
In the confusion, the hyena matriarch is cornered. Surrounded by three huge lionesses, each twice her weight. But this experienced old matriarch is far too wily to let a few cats get the better of her. All the hyenas escape with their lives, but they haven't eaten anywhere near as much as they needed. They're still hungry. By morning, the dogs are getting desperate. They might be some of Africa's most efficient hunters, with 85% of their hunts successful. But they've been pushed off hunting grounds, first by hyenas, then by lions. And now, the clan is back on their trail. The pack locks onto a target an adult male puku. 180 pounds of meat. They run the antelope down in less than half a mile. But they barely have time for a mouthful before the clan arrives. These nightmare neighbors are making life hell for the dogs. The pack returns home but they have nothing to offer the hungry litter. Tandi, Lula, and the other pups are used to eating twice a day. After more than 24 hours without food, they're weakening. Less than two weeks from now, they'll need to be strong enough to accompany the adults on a hunt for the first time. It's a big step that marks the move from puppyhood to adolescence. And they're desperate to make it. But they're missing out on the nourishment they need to grow into strong adults. The pack would normally rest during the heat of the day. But eager for a kill, the hunters soon head out again. The little ones twitter with enthusiasm and try to tag along. Today's babysitter tries to herd his charges back into hiding. But the overexcited pups stay noisily playing right out in the open. The babysitter is beginning to lose control. Half a mile away, another youngster is also in the open. Ndogo has survived his first night alone. He's roamed away from the den before, but never so far. Or for so long. He's young, naive, and vulnerable. And the Mopane pack is heading straight towards him. It could be a chance for the dogs to dispatch one of their rivals. The lead dogs speed past, intent on chasing prey. 
But then, spotted. Dongo is in real danger here. He seems frozen with fear. Dogs have been known to kill hyenas, but right now, this pack seems unsure of what to do. They don't attack. If they kill the young male, it's highly unlikely they'll eat him. Dogs don't tend to eat other carnivores. And with hungry pups at home, what they need now is food. Ndogo was lucky today. Late in the afternoon, the wild dog pups are still reluctant to settle in the undergrowth. The babysitter has had a tiring day, keeping them under control. Once again, Tandy sits by herself. The pack unity, so natural to the rest of the dogs, doesn't seem to come easy to her. As the sun begins to set, the pup's games show no sign of quietening down. They've attracted attention. It's not little Ndogo, but the formidable matriarch of the Ukuo clan. Catching a whiff of hyena, the pups and the babysitter are on high alert. Dogs are on the move, already five miles away, putting as much space between them and the hyenas as possible. And with them are Lula and her four brothers. They survived the hyena attack. Together, 
the dogs are leaving their den behind. It's more than a week ahead of schedule, and the little ones aren't really ready to run with the adults. But the den has been compromised, and the alphas won't risk losing another pup. Lula stays close. Perhaps a little more aware now of the value in being part of a pack. At the Ukor Den, another family is also reunited. Two days after he took off, Ndogo trots back to rejoin the clan. After his near miss with the wild dogs, he's opting to stay at home a while longer. In a year or so, Umdogo will leave again, this time for good. He'll join another clan, where he'll have the chance to work his way to the top of the male hierarchy. He may even one day mate with a matriarch. But for now, He's going to put up with being bottom of the pecking order. For Lula and her brothers, the next few weeks will be a succession of thrilling first experiences. Setting eyes on the river. Witnessing a hunt. Encountering strange new neighbors. As she and her family meander through their vast range, Lula will learn every step of the way. In the months to come, she'll grow into an integral part of the Mopane pack. But eventually, she too will leave her family and go in search of another, where one day she will have pups of her own. <laughs>